Travis Etienne is one of the best running backs in college football, and with the injury to Justin Ross, many expect Travis to blossom into a superstar, if he wasn't already one to begin with. In today's video, I want to shed some light on the rise of ETN and how he became a star. If you are watching this video, then I know you're a college football fan. So why not take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button and help me reach 3k subscribers by the end of July. I appreciate every single one of you, and now let's get started with the rise of Travis ETN. Growing up in Jennings, Louisiana, Travis was born and raised in SEC territory, and he was actually a Bama fan from the beginning. Jennings wasn't a very big school, but ETN would help put the school on the map. While growing up, he was raised in a very religious and humble household, and he was the kind of kid you always wanted to be around. He was tremendous at football from a very young age, and it really began to show once he got to Jennings High School. He was an absolute stud for his team, and as he got further along, he had become the next great running back out of the state of Louisiana. He originally wasn't highly recruited because he was from a small town and he didn't, and he didn't attend many high-profile football camps. He loved to hang out with his friends and be a kid, but he would have to change his lifestyle if he wanted to be a big time college football player. His first major offer was Kansas, even though that isn't exactly high major, and then offers from schools such as Missouri, Arkansas, and Mississippi State rolled in. He blew up after he ran a 4.38 at a recruiting camp, and bigger schools such as LSU, Texas A&M, and Tennessee started to recruit him really hard. But Travis always had a dream school deep down in his heart. He had always wanted to be a Clemson Tiger, but he just wasn't getting interest from them. He was a four-star recruit and one of the better backs in the country, but a school like Clemson can get any kid in the country. He remembers going to his high school coach and continually asking him if Clemson had reached out, and he always left the room disappointed. With that dream kind of on the back burner, he started seriously evaluating his other options, and after a really good visit, he decided it would be best for him to commit to Texas A&M and become an Aggie. He apparently loved the program, and it was somewhat close to home, so it seemed like a done deal. Eventually, Travis walked back into his high school coach's office one day, and he said that he thinks he committed too early. Turns out he wasn't 100% committed, and he announced that he was going to reopen his recruitment. This came as a surprise to some, but many expected Travis to be playing at a higher level than A&M. Consensus was that he was likely going to stay home and be the next great running back for LSU. With so many good running backs and recent stars such as Leonard Fournette and Darius Geis, it seemed to make sense that he would become a Tiger. They were right, he would become a Tiger. Just not a purple and gold one. Clemson originally had the running back, his name was Cordarian Richardson. He was a top 100 player, and he was supposed to be the future of the position. And everything changed when Richardson backed out of his commitment and joined UCF instead. Travis clearly remembers the Clemson coaching staff calling him one day and telling him to tune into the national championship game versus Alabama. The Tigers were set to play the Tide in the national title game, and the ETN was almost certain the Tide were going to roll Clemson. Except, it didn't happen like they thought it would. In one of the best national championship games ever, Deshaun Watson completed a pass to Hunter Renfro, and Clemson got its first national title under Dabo Sweeney. After the game, his family was shocked at what had happened, and that was the moment he knew he wanted to play for Clemson. Some staff came down to Jennings, Louisiana the following week, and they came in and sold their program to him. Travis wanted to go there, but now the feeling was mutual, and the rest was history. Dabo nabbed Etienne out of LSU territory, and oh boy, he would make, them, he would make LSU pay for missing out on him. According to 24-7 Sports, Travis was a four-star recruit, number 15 overall running back prospect, and the 213th best player in the class of 2017. His dream had come true, and he was now ready to go dominate for one of college football's most prestigious programs. Going into the 2017 season, the Tigers were going into their ninth full year under head coach Dabo Sweeney, and Travis was going to have the chance to play from the very beginning. Sean Elliott, and now USF head coach Jeff Scott, were his offensive coaches, and their game plans were going to set him up for success. With the departure of Deshaun Watson, the Tigers were going to have to find a new quarterback. They had Kelly Bryant and big-time recruits such as Zarek Cooper and Hunter Johnson competing for the job, but many assumed Kelly was actually going to win it. At running back, the Tigers lost their star in Wayne Gallman to the NFL, and it was going to be a battle between Tavian Feaster, Adam Choice, and Etienne for the starting job. There were also a ton of question marks at the wide receiver spot, as it was going to be a battle between Deion Kane, Hunter Renfro, Ray Ray McLeod, and T. Higgins. Nevertheless, Clemson was expected to be good despite all the question marks, and they opened up the season against Kent State. In their win, Travis rushed the ball for 81 yards and a touchdown. Not bad, but how would he fare against better competition? Well, they would find out the following week, as they were going to be on the national stage against Auburn. Except, they didn't. They won the game, but for some reason, he didn't see the field. He finally got a chance on the road against number 14 Louisville, and he ran for 98 yards and a touchdown on only 6 carries versus the Cardinals. Clemson continued to do a running back by committee game plan, 
but Travis played well when he touched the ball. He ran for 113 yards and two touchdowns versus Boston College, 97 yards and two touchdowns against Florida State, and 62 yards and two touchdowns against the Citadel. But he wasn't the star just yet. Clemson started out 5-0 before they lost on the road to Syracuse in what became one of the weirder upsets of the decade. With their college football playoff hopes on life support, they won out and went 12-1, huge wins over number 20 NC State, number 24 South Carolina, and number 7 Miami in the ACC championship game. They would get back into the college football playoff, but this team just wasn't that good as they got blown out in their rematch against Alabama. As a freshman, Travis led the team in rushing as he rushed for 766 yards and 13 touchdowns while averaging over 7 yards per carry. It was safe to say ETM was a future star in the making. Going into the 2018 season, the quarterback question was likely going to finally be answered as Kelly Bryant was returning to the field, and if he failed, they had the best high school quarterback recruit of all time in Trevor Lawrence to fill in if things went south. ETM was named to the preseason watch list for the Dope Walker Award, and he was expected to break out, which is exactly what he did. Travis actually started out the season pretty slow, as he didn't do much against Furman, and he was kind of a non-factor in their drama-filled return game against Texas A&M. While Trevor Lawrence and Kelly Bryant were sorting out the drama, Travis began to emerge as a star. He ran for 162 yards and two touchdowns against Georgia Southern, 203 yards and three touchdowns against Syracuse, and 167 yards and three touchdowns against Wake Forest. Besides 150-yard games against Louisville and South Carolina, ETN cooled off for the rest of the regular season. To this point, Clemson looked like the best team in the country with Lawrence running the show. They survived a scare against Syracuse, where Chase Bryce had to come in and save the day, but besides that, it was smooth sailing for the rest of the year. The ACC wasn't very good, as the two best teams that they had to play were NC State and Boston College. They returned to the ACC championship game with a 12-0 record, and they dismantled Pitt behind ETN's 156 yards and two touchdowns. To this point, Travis was near the top in rushing yards and yards per carry, as Clemson was also headed back to the college football playoff. They were set to play Notre Dame in the first round, and he ran for 109 yards and a touchdown in their blowout win. And they were once again matched up with Alabama in the national championship game. I knew the team would be hungry, but whoever led their pregame speech deserves a raise, as Clemson won 44-16, and they absolutely humiliated the Crimson Tide on college football's biggest stage. In that game, he only rushed for 86 yards and two touchdowns, and the Tigers were once again national champions. On the year, ETN became a Heisman contender as he rushed for 1,658 yards, 24 touchdowns, and averaged 8 yards per carry. Travis was a college football superstar, and he was expected to be even better going into the 2019 season. Lawrence, T. Higgins, Justin Ross, and ETM were back, and Clemson opened up the season as title favorites. Travis burst onto the scene in their week one win over Georgia Tech as he ran for 205 yards and 3 touchdowns. Like last year though, he cooled off as he didn't rush for over 100 yards in their next 4 games, but he would rebound. He then ran for 100 plus yards in their next 6 games, including a huge 212 yard performance against Wofford. Literally like last year, the ACC was terrible and it was a cakewalk for Clemson all the way to the championship game. Besides a thrilling win over North Carolina, which they should have lost, every other game was a blowout and Clemson was once again on cruise control to the college football playoff. Before they could return though, they'd have to play number 23 Virginia, and they won that game 62-17. They're once again back in the college football playoff, but it wasn't going to be as easy this time. In one of the best football games I have ever seen, Clemson defeated Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl, and after a late interception by Justin Fields, it was all over. ETM was a non-factor in that game, but they were headed back to the title game. They were set to play Joe Burrow's LSU Tigers, and they were just too much for Clemson to handle, as they ended up losing the game. You could say LSU stuck at the ETN for picking Clemson, but Travis already had his ring and had a ton of awards. He finished the year with 1,614 yards, 19 touchdowns, and 7.8 yards per carry, but I guess he just wasn't ready to head to the NFL yet. The best running back in school history, and a first-round pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. He's already the leading rusher and touchdown scorer and he is a big time senior year. If you enjoyed today's video, please take a moment to smash that like button. I know both Travis and I would appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe and help me reach 3k subscribers by the end of July. Check out all my other college football player videos and until next time, peace.